Electric Lady Land is the third and final studio album by the Jimi Hendrix Experience. It was released before Hendrix's death in 1970. It's a double album, and it was the only re- record from the experience with production solely credited to Jimi Hendrix. It's the band's most commercially successful release, and its only number one album. It was released by Reprise Records in the United States in October 16, 1968. What? Why are we... Why, why, why are you talking like that? Why have we changed our aesthetic? Why is it all smooth jazz? It's the smooth jazz. Public, we've, we've, we've sold to um, public radio. So oh, this is the new format sorry. now. Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, so we can't uh, say cunt. Um, no, definitely not. Fuck is off limits. Mm. They frown upon front bum. They don't like meat apron. Mm. To shame, um, that's a good one. Mm. Cock is allowed, though. So we'll be saying cock quite a bit during this broadcast. Yeah. And uh, uh, sorry. Um, we just need to start for a word from our sponsors now. Yeah. Uh, it's from Jerry's Downtown Butcher. Um, get your meat hot. Get your meat fresh. Get your meat in large chunks. And we're back. Um, mm. So, yeah, we, we listened to Electric Ladyland uh, by Jimi Hendrix experience this week. We did. Can I just stop you there and uh, we just got to cut mm. to a commercial again? Sure, sure. Uh, all day long, touch the wood. You can chop all the wood. Swallow down the sawdust. New York Public School Systems. And we're back. Yeah, so uh, this week we listened to Electric Ladyland. Um, just just recapping um, the previous section of our, uh, of, of this audio recording for mm, people that just, just tuned in. in. Mm. Yeah, by the Jimi Hendrix experience. Uh, so, yeah. We'll yeah, just, uh, right. I'll just, I'll just stop you there, and we'll just cut mm. to commercial again. Fuck the commercials! I'm out of commercials. <laughs> fuck this bit. Don't say fuck. You only let you say guy. Yeah. You cunt. We're gonna have to replace it with cock. Um, we're doing yeah. Electric Ladyland, weren't we? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jimmy Hendrix. This really experience. surprised me, actually. You know what? I, I think of myself as. You know, I love all this retro. I mean, it's retro for us because we're kids of the 90s. I love all the 60s, 70s music, classic bands, Beatles, Doors, Stones, all the shit we've done on the show. And I consider myself a big Jimi Hendrix fan. Uh, You know, he's a fucking legend, guitar virtuoso, right? Hey, Joe and um, Purple Haze Haze. and uh, Little Wing and, songs uh, songs that aren't on this album. Yeah, all these amazing fucking songs that aren't on this album. Honestly. Yeah. I put this on, and I I mean, you, you picked it, and I was like, wicked, Hendrix, fuck, this is going to be easy, right? This is obviously the worst piece of shit he ever put out, and it's probably why he took lots of drugs and drunk and didn't wake up. <laughs> I did a little bit of research. Before oh, choosing this really? album, I looked down and this is the big selling one, and it's got five star reviews across the board. Mm. And uh, I popped it on, I was see. listening to it, and I thought, what a pile of shit. Yeah. Mm. Well, we're in, in agreement. Fucking three minutes in. Um, yeah. This is unheard of, ladies and gentlemen. Um, constant listeners know that. Uh, my partner and I here in crime um, very rarely see eye to eye. Well, that's not true. Well, you're a little bit taller than me, so. No, I'm not. No, I thought you were. I'm always on my knees. <laughs> I don't believe you think you're lying. That's not right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was putting a list together at the list. We do a skippability list. And the thing that occurred to me is there's 16 songs on here, and you mm-hmm. can throw away the first 14. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's yeah. Well, yeah. All I along mean, the Watchtower, Voodoo Child's Light Return at the end, 
and then the rest of it, That's fuck it. off. Yeah. What do you, I mean, you chuck it, you go to your CD store and you buy the double edition best of Jimi Hendrix. Um, coming off this album, you've got exactly what you just said. All along the Watchtower, which A is a cover, uh, and, and Voodoo Child. Um, you might get, you might get Crosstown Traffic, but it's filler. And yeah. you might get the original Voodoo Child, but also. Mm. Well, so that's slight. like a 14 minute jam of mostly shit, in my opinion. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I mean, but you can, this, this screams to me when artists, bands, uh, there are exceptions, which we will discuss, but when you self produce, it doesn't always make for the best record. Would that yeah. be a fair statement? I mean, I don't know. There's a lot of very talented self producers out there. I mean, you got Lenny yeah. Kravitz. Was it Stevie Wonder? Um, <clears throat> no, Stevie was best when he was with Quincy Jones. We all know that. Um, yeah, it's, it's, but like um, for me, I go. Uh, here's the there's the line end and the low end. High end is Weezer's second album, Pinkerton, self produced, magic, good work, boys. Um. Stone Temple Pilots, whatever their fucking last album was called, Between the Sheets or something. Awful. Just the bones were there, but they didn't know how to produce it and make it sound good. Pearl Jam did the same thing, self-produced. Did what did they, they self-produce? No, maybe they didn't. Maybe they just changed producers and that made them suck. Possibly. I don't know. Metallica well, got rid of you're, Brendan O'Brien. Yeah, yeah. All their albums they did with Brendan are the best. And then they got rid of him. And they went downhill. And then they went, oh, Brendan, can you come back and remix these ones that we did without you? And he went, yeah, I can't need the money. Um, have have your, um, the guys that pay us money to mention them every episode because we have such a wide uh, influence on society, Metallica, have they ever self-produced? They kind of self-produced Garage Days Re-Revisited, All right, their album of covers. They did get a little okay. help from um, Bob Rock at the time, so I believe. And Bob Rock, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's All when right. they so did no, Nick no Cave covers and you know, um, Whiskey in the Jar and all those. Turn the Page, right. they didn't have who, that album. They self-produced it. sounds good. their best-selling album by far, um, the collaboration with uh, Lou Reed, Lulu. Uh, who produced that one? You, you're going to bring that up with me, you fucking piece of shit. <laughs> you're going to bring fucking Lulu up. I, I went there. I brought Lulu up. Um, who no. produced it? Did they? Leave, me al- leave me alone. You need to go and sit in your quiet space? <laughs> People know about that album. Daniel Pink doesn't exist. Up. Shut up. <laughs> it was released and it was it does even not marketed. released. They never it. happened. It's they just a rumor this, that people made up this amazing collaboration. Anyway, um, um, glad he yes, fucking it's, died. It's very rare that a self produced album is any good. It's usually self indulgent and not uh, orally very pleasing, right? Um, Sounds like he was falling out with everyone in the band about this time. Uh, well, stepping on a few toes and doing his his thing. And this is the this, only uh, album that he did that was um, stereo. The others were mono. Oh, look at that. Mm. Very good. But, got that going just, for it. But then not much else. I mean, when did, what year did he die? Was it 70? Yeah. 69, 70 in that ballpark. Like this... He had a four-year-long career. Wow, that's that's pretty big. It's longer than Kurt. Uh, well, then he had his early side stuff, like he was Little Richard's guitar man, and he did all this other stuff beforehand. And then he well, yeah, it was second the fiddle for a bit. Doesn't really wasn't producing yeah. his own yeah, stuff. He's out the front. I had but uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
maybe his shtick was up, you know, maybe three years in doing the bar chords and oodlies and noisy solos, people just went, oh, yawn. You know, he's setting another guitar um, on fire. People, um, from what I'm reading, he, he was the side man in a lot of bands. He never really lasted long. But people generally got sick of him for being unreliable. Um, uh, just basically silly behavior. Mm. Um, don't think the dr- drink hurt. Um, I've watched um, biography, biographical movies of a few of them, of Jimi Hendrix. And none of them actually got into the fact that um, I was reading tonight that he was actually a pretty horrible drunk. When you get, you'd get drunk, you'd get angry and get a bit fighty and um, just turn into a total dick. And when he was sober, he was a really nice little sweetheart of a fella. Uh-huh. Um, but it does sound like he, he was his own worst enemy much of the time and didn't really stick to a lot of things. Yeah, uh, ba- basically like got the boot from the army. Mm. Yeah, I mean, he st- he was creative, right? Like the dude essentially created a style of guitar playing unto himself, right? And whether that was just a wah wah and a fucking Fender and a Marshall turned up to eleven, it worked, and everybody copied him since. You know, whether it's Stevie Ray Vaughan or Mike McCready or Pearl Jam, like. Everybody wants to be Hendrix. But the guy, like, whether they were good or bad, he wrote a lot of music, right? And this this album sort of speaks to that and that it's fucking way too many songs for an album. Double uh, album, only, apparently. Yeah, and only a couple of them are good. But they're still releasing shit, like songs that they haven't released now. It's 2023. It's fucking a million years since he died. And they're still pulling shit out of the vaults. Here's a 20-minute jam that nobody's ever heard. And they're like, the fans, the aficionados, they're going to put death threats on you and I for not liking this album. Um, They just pour over every note, you know? Oh, he played that note there over a fucking E sus diminished seventh. And, uh, uh, you know, it's... You know, he had four good songs and then he died. And a ton of shit, as far as I can really tell. I mean, I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to say it. I'm putting it out there. I give him more than four. And he's he's like... What are they? You'd have to put him on that. Well, you know, like what we said. Hey, Joe. Purple Haze. Little Wing. Fucking... I guess all along the Watchtower, though. He didn't write that one, but just, you know. He He didn't write Hey, Hey, Joe, either. I oh, know, yeah, you're right. That's a fucking uh, old timey song. Mm. Little Wing, come on, that's genius. Uh, uh, I wouldn't put it on uh, my list. Yeah, well, look, the you top got five Foxy all... Lady. Oh yeah, okay, but that was only good on. Uh... Hang on, let's go to his album. That's actually a good so, one. That, right, so we Red got House. to four, and then you went, no, that's no good. No, no. Yeah, I know, damn. Red House is good, but that's blues. Fire is good. No. Put your ladder to my fire. No, I don't Get like my fire. To your fire. No, I don't, I don't do, like do, fire. Do, 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 do. The Wind Cries Mary? Come on, that's a good no, one. that's too. boring. Don't like it. It is a bit boring, but it's um, <laughs> it's, <good. laughs> it's a bit um, boring, but, yeah, I mean, come on. But after that, yeah, it's, it's a lot of shit. I actually, my favorite Hendrix album was one they put out, must have been like in the year 2000. And it was exactly that. It was like studio outtakes and shit that had never been put out. And it was mostly instrumentals. Fucking can't remember what it was called for the life of me now, but I remember loving that. Uh, South Southern, no, South Saturn Delta. Came out in 1997. That's, I'm going to recommend everybody goes and listens to that instead of the album we just listened to because it's better. There you go. Um, There's a song called Pally Gap, which is... Okay. Okay. Oh, that, that's another yeah. album. I want to talk about this Little Miss Strange song. Like, where the fuck did that come from? That's like, oh, it's like it's like another it. band. It's like another band slipped their song on his record. 
Sounds oh, really? like a it's different vocalists, it's, you know, different singer. It's written by someone else. It sounds like a really perky little white boy pop song. I don't right. know how it fit on this record. If I'm going to be completely honest with you, this record, I um, I just kind of switched out of it. I barely paid attention because it was just horrible. Yeah, same, like, same what thing. What is this? I was like, how am I going to? No, it's, oh, it's painful. You know the beginning um, of it? The first song and, and and the gods made love. I thought, oh, this is going to be epic. Mm-hmm. Like you know, it's one of those big building up. You're going to get it. You're going to yeah. get it. And then it just sort of goes into yeah. Uh, what is this? Have you been to Electric Ladyland? What a piece of shit. Then <laughs> Crosstown Traffic's a bit. But I put that's. The only song on here I put decent for. Everything else is filler except for the last two songs, and I kind of went decent for Crosstown Traffic. Yeah, but it's not a song I'd listen to. No, I think, well, yeah, yeah. So you put decent for that, and then the two the bangers. So all along the Watchtower and Voodoo Child, slight return. Are they on your epics or are they just decent as well? All along the Watchtower is an epic. Hmm. Uh, Voodoo Child. I struggle with, I put it epic, but it's also decent, yeah. I guess. I think the intro and the riff yeah. is epic, and then once he starts singing, mm, decent. Yeah. Um, you know, I got um, fire. Come On Part 1. I wrote down, that's the, that's the melody from um, Beatles' Money. Like, it's Not just sure. totally snatched. Um, mm-hmm. There's another song. Did I write it down? Which one it was? Oh, yeah. Burning of the Midlight Lamp. I wrote great intro. Then I put filler after that. Like, the intro is great. Mm. Uh, like, really cool piece of... I don't know. It's like a it's like a keyboard and a guitar with a lot of effects on at the same time. And it creates a really interesting sound. And it's just quite a iconic piece of music and then the song everything after that is shit yeah do you think yeah. if this album got put out not today or back then or in any era by an unknown artist do you think they would get noticed mm. 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 I you know, probably... Hey Joe put him on the map. That was the first song. Mm-hmm. And then a couple of years later, he's run out of shit, to be honest. Mm. Well, you know, it's like most of the flash in the pan musicians. You have your peak flash in the pan. I was just saying he was a complete musical legend. But, uh, you know, you're famous at 25 and you're dead at 27. So he's another one of these <coughs> fuckers that died in the 27 club. So we're almost on a trilogy our next album should be another 27 club loser um yes yeah, it's, it's got choked on his own vomit didn't he that's how hendrix went out like john bonham uh asphyxi- barbiturate asphyxiation oh he was uh yeah. found on the floor by a girlfriend at 11 in the morning yeah and he was pronounced dead in the hospital uh 12. Oh. But after 12, the uh, the ambulance arrived nine minutes after they found him on the ground. Yeah. yeah. So it took him an hour to get pronounced dead. Okay. Uh, yeah. Do you think if you came... No, I'm not going to go there. Move along. <laughs> you know what? Just thinking, Weezer's had way more hits than this guy ever had. Oh, and shit. they're not at the legend status, really, are they? They they're at the they're kind of the culty band, well, really. Lisa yeah, now, I think cult. I think they they were they were a hit band post Nirvana. So the Blue Album, they were a hit band. They were a big deal. Then they put out an album that was poorly received. That then took about four years to become a cult classic, Pink and uh, Pinkerton. Uh, then they came back with green, the hash pipe thing. Uh, and then they just kind of stayed as mediocre Weezer since then. Um, they've got the hit soon, they've got some good songs. You're a bit harsh. I think 
first two albums, Weezer is legendary. And then continuing Weezer, not so legendary. Like if you took yeah, plenty of hits along the way, they keep the they keep the lights on. You know, I'll they give do. them that. The, the 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 lights aren't going off. The you know the golden toilets are still there for sure. Uh, but if I had to pick, you know, a Mount Rushmore of '90s bands, I think Weezer would be in there for me. You know, your Pearl Jam, yeah. Nirvana. But I was, my my point is, like, they're not held in the reverence of Jimi Hendrix. But well, you're like, you're not revered until you're dead. Like, if Kurt hadn't died, nobody would give a fuck about Nirvana. If and Nirvana were awesome, died, and, and then he died. Like, they hadn't fucked it up yeah. when he died. Yeah, Jimi Hendrix, when this album came out, the reviews were rubbish, and then he dies, and then all of a sudden <laughs> the reviews are fantastic, you know? Yeah. Well, it's like, um, didn't that happen with Imagine and uh, and Double Fantasy? It was. Yeah, we um, talked about that. That was sort of a yeah, a lukewarm like, uh, reception. Yeah. Yep, Paul's really? winning. Paul and the Wings. Oh, they're the best. Yay! Long live Savior Paul. And then John dies, and it's like, oh, actually, John Lennon was pretty fucking good. Um, yeah, like all these famous artists like Michelangelo. You know, you go way back. They didn't sell a single fucking painting until after they died, a lot of them, you know. Death death makes you famous, as Scott Whalen said. Wayland? Wyland. I don't know. Um Yeah, I think Wayland had sort of burnt his bridges when he died then. <laughs> it wasn't no, really. One of his one of his earlier songs, it was uh Sell More Records When I'm Dead. I think that was on their third album, was one of his lyrics. I was like, Yeah. yeah. Except he, I don't think he did. I don't think there was like a giant resurgence of no, Scott Wheeland when they he died. Done. Yeah, they sort of burnt his bridges like people sort of, oh, yeah, fuck yeah. Well, it's, I mean, that's the same thing. So take the pilots. I, not They're not as big as Nirvana, so it's an odd thing to put together. But they had, one. let's say, one, two, three, and I'll give them four amazing albums. And then they had two really mediocre albums and then he did a couple of solo albums including a christmas album if you really want a fucking deep dive where he croons like frank sinatra uh God. yeah it's fucking painful it's like your drunk uncle at a christmas party off key and look up winter wonderland on youtube scott wise no. trip oh no, right um uh, what the fuck was my point? Yes, they put out two mediocre albums, so you're kind of like over it by then, whereas Nirvana, he died at their peak, you know? Uh, so it keeps that reverence high. It's like if um, if Eddie, poor old Eddie Vedder, if he had died in 94 after Vitology, they would have been, ah, Pearl, oh, Pearl Jam, forever awesome. But no, they've had 30 years of... Shit. You know, never-ending mediocrity. Yeah. So people are like, it sort of ruins the legacy a little bit when you keep going. You know, Eddie Vedder, people... if you're listening, you're also short. Yeah, carry on, yeah. Brett. Sorry. Um, and you should shave off your beard. It's not working for you. Go back to the cheekbones, mate. Um, Google alerts for Eddie Vedder. Maybe Pearl Jam should do a Christmas album with a. Yeah. Um, they did Christmas songs, so they've done it. Oh, yeah. Fucking hell, have they? Good girl. They have. Um, so, oh. take, like, if, if we were kids of the 60s. They're, they're, they're six inches away from giving hand jobs for crack, aren't they? I mean. Yeah, it's this, probably been done. Yeah. 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 There was uh, a couple of rough winters there, I guess. It's cold in Seattle. The Stones, yeah. if we were fans of fucking Mick and Keith in the 60s in their prime, right? That's okay. another band that would, they're just being shit for decades, but so somehow they saying. sell out if stadiums. We were, if we were fans back in the day, in their heyday, you know, Street Fighting Man and early 70s and all that shit when they were good, how would you feel about their current output? Are you just like, oh, fuck it, the Stones, stop putting out music? And does it ruin their legacy? You know, like for me, uh, I'm not a big fan of the Stones. I know they've got good shit from, from that era, 60s and 70s. But then I also know that 
you know, when you listen to the greatest hits, it's like the first half of the first CD in the double CD set that gets any listening. And then the rest, fuck it. Yet, yeah. I've been a fan, if you're a fan of the Rolling Stones and these bands we're talking about and that's hurting your feelings, well, yeah. yeah. I mean, the yeah, truth. We, we, you know, the 60s are revered, all these great bands, but it takes the, 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 the truth speakers of Pointless and Confused to just, you know, get rid of all this revisionist retro crap and take it for what it is. I mean, it was just... Uh, a little known, a lesser known podcast out there. Um, a little, little Joey Rogan. I mean, I just heard him last night saying, "Quite listen, confused. They they don't play no shit." You know, he said that. He said that, and I and I thought, yeah, that yeah, that's right. We don't we don't play no shit, do we, Brad? There's no well, shit alleg- being played allegedly here. Allegedly, he said that. Allegedly, I don't. You know, it's well, I'm pretty sure. What he he, he, if he didn't, he would have. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure he was. I mean, he mouthed it, didn't he? That was podcast. more implied. Yeah. He is a, is a wink. Yeah. A little look in his eye, really. That's what I'm saying. But still, the point is there. Yes. Mm. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, producer Eric, he's just put the light on again. Um, sorry, it's once again time for a word from our sponsor. Bye, tampons. And we're back. And we're um, back. Yeah, just yeah, just to recap, um, if you if you're just um, if you're just tuning in uh, on your drive cross country, we've been talking about uh, Daniel's love she, for the Rolling Stones. Yeah, shit. She's been shit for decades. The shit. Yeah, one of them's dead. So a whole generation of people are realizing that they can die. Everyone knows they murdered him allegedly. The drummer, wow! What was it Brian? Something they oh, found Brian dead Jones in a pool. Drowned, drowned in the pool. Yeah, he's just fucking drunk and fell in the pool. Jesus Christ! He was murdered. It wasn't worth murdering. Mm-hmm. He's like, they got hey, rid of yeah, him. Keith. I really want on this next record. I really like if we could be a lot like George Harrison. I like to bring the fucking sitar in up and getting into my Indian stuff. Can I play the sitar on Paint It Black? Can I? Keith. Fuck off. And they pushed him in the pool. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and the sitar did not keep him afloat, allegedly. Mm. Yeah. Jimmy, goddamn Hendrix. Anyway. Oh, Jimmy, yeah. Big hands, Skippability, I think we're agreed. Skip the first 14 songs, last two songs. That's about fucking it, really. I mean, straight up, if if you've made it this far into the episode, which, according to the analytics, um, unlikely. As <laughs> I was about to say, as people listen, you invite more of your friends to listen. So by the time we get to here, this is where we have our peak peak listenership. Yeah. So I, I just oh, want to say, no. um, don't listen to this record. Just go and get a best of Jimi Hendrix and. Enjoy your life in a well curated, easy to digest uh, album. Yeah. 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 Don't think he's much of anything. Shall we just rate this piece of shit? What are you going to give it out of 10? <laughs> out of 10? How many songs are on this again? Like 28? 16. 16. Oh, fuck. Yeah, mate. It's. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a three and a half. I'll give him a half because he covered Bob Dylan, and I really like Bob Dylan. So there you go. Yeah, three, I'm going three and a half. Big black hands out of ten. Big black hands. Yeah, he plays with his thumb. Seen that shit? He'll play like the root note of a power chord with his thumb over the top of the neck and then just solo with the rest of his big, long fucking snake fingers. It's insane. Yeah, I'm going to give him a two. Yeah, fuck him. Okay. <laughs> yeah, along the Watchtower, that's pretty awesome. It's one of the great, it's a great, 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 huge song. Sounds amazing. 
Um, pretty chilly. It's all right. Yeah. Rest of it, total dog shit. Let's face it. Um, I think probably most people would just um add uh, along the watchtower to their playlist, and that's you, that you can be done with it. To be honest. Yeah. Agreed. We are in agreement on this good day. Yeah. On this wonderful day in the studio okay. where it is warm and we're surrounded by roses. Yeah. Fuck Jimi Hendrix. Well, let's end this episode, shall we? Very mm-hmm. well. Good day, sir. And now for a word from our sponsor. My tampons. Oh, I was expecting the drum solo, but oh well. You ruined it.